Thanks for watching the screencast. The objective for the screencast is learners will be able to determine the slope of a linear function given its graph. Okay, so this is once again the definition of slope. We saw this when we were finding slope from the table. Today we want to find slope from a graph. But it's the same definition. For a linear function, the slope, also called the rate of change, is the same for any two order pairs in the function. The slope we often give the letter name m. Why is it m as the slope? Nobody really knows the exact answer, is my best understanding. It's just what is standardly used in the United States to refer to slope. So we used this definition here. Works really well when you have a table. But the definition we're going to focus on today is the rise over run definition. So for a graph, for the graph of a linear function, the rise is the amount of change up or down. And the run is the amount of change left or right. So when you hear rise over run, that typically is easy to calculate or figure when you're looking at the graph of a linear function. And the graph of a linear function is a line. We're going to be looking at line graphs today. So this is going to be the focus for today's instruction. Here's an important point, though. The slope, I hope you'll recall, should be written either as an integer, an integer, you know, like, a negative whole number or zero or a positive whole number or as a simplified fraction so if you got for a slope if you got like six fourths that's not really simplified yet you'd want to go ahead and divide both the numerator and denominator by two and write instead three halves so every slope we write should be written as either an integer or a simplified, simplified fraction. Okay, here's a picture of Mr. Slope Guy. This is an image that I found on the internet that uh, succinctly describes the four different types of slope we have. Uh, I hope nobody saw this video or this image and said that this looks like Mr. Bowman. Mr. Bowman has a beard, okay? Um, but the four different types of slopes all appear on Mr. Slope Guy's face here. Here we have lines with a positive slope, and that's why his right eye is like a plus sign. These are positive slopes. These are lines that increase from left to right. But here his left eye looks like a negative sign because his eyebrow here is a line with a negative slope. Lines with negative slope decrease from left to right. Now there are two other special cases here. One is this straight up and down line that's the bridge of his nose. And lines that are straight up and down have, the reason his the tip of his nose is that is undefined slope. We can't define the slope of a vertical line. If you think about rise over run, it's all rise. There is no change left or right. And then the fourth type would be this line here, his mouth, the horizontal line. And that's modeled by uh, his cheeks here look like zeros. That's zero slope. The slope of a horizontal line is zero. So if you need to refer back to this image, you've got a copy of this in your handout. And uh, this is a good one to hang on to. Okay, let's get at the task at hand. Let's determine the slope of some lines. Let's look at this example here on the left side. This is a linear function graph. It's a function because it passes the vertical line test. Every x value has only one y value. Let's determine the slope. To determine the slope, we need to know the rise and the run. Now I need to pick two points that are on the graph. Uh, and I can pick any two points I want. I just want to pick maybe two that have nice integer x's and y's. So let me roll maybe with 0, 1. And let me pick 
1, 4. Now, if you pick different two points, we should get the same answer as long as we've done everything correctly. When I'm finding the slope, I find it really helpful to pick the leftmost point to start with. And I do that every time. So I'm going to start right here with this point, 0, 1. I also find it helpful to do the rise before I do the run. I think it's easier to remember to put the right number in the right order doing so. So essentially I need to find a way to go up or down and then left or right to get from this point to this point. So I'm going to start, I'm going to go up this far and then I'm going to go right this far. I'm going to draw what Mr. Bowman calls a slope triangle. You see how it makes a little triangle with the part of the line that connects the two points. So what I need to decide now is how long are those segments? How far did I rise? I rose up one, two, three. We had a student recently in Algebra 1 who told us that they found it helpful to count the number of boxes next to the rise instead of trying to count the points on the line. If that helps you, do it. Once I rose three, then how far did I run? I run to the right one unit. So the run is plus one. You have to remember that going left and right, you know, to the left would be negative, to the right would be positive. With my setup, my run is always positive. So what's my slope? Well, it's the rise of positive three over the run, positive one. And that is the slope. I just now want to remember that I should write that in simplified form. 3 divided by 1 is the integer 3. That line has a slope of 3. I want to point out briefly that if you'd chosen these two points instead, if you'd chosen, I'll do this one in red. If you'd chosen this point, but say maybe you went to this, well, let's do this one. Let's do negative 2, negative 5 you would still get the same slope. There you would rise this many and run this many. You would rise up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And you would run 1, 2, 3. And you would write that the slope is positive 9 over positive 3. But guess what? That's still 3 again. It really does not matter which two points you pick. Let's look at this example here. I'll pick, um, let's do this point and this point. I always start from the leftmost point, and I always do the rise first. This rise, though, is negative. I need to go down. I need to go down four, and then right one. So my slope here is rise, negative 4, over the run, which is positive 1. And again, I need to say, hey, I can simplify that. Negative 4 divided by positive 1 is just negative 4. This line has a slope of negative 4. Let's look at a couple of other examples. The example here on the left side, I'll pick this point. at negative 3, 2, and I'll pick the origin, 0, 0. I'll start at the leftmost point, I'll go down 2, and I'll go right 3. Essentially that rise over run is just a path to get from point to point. So my slope here is negative 2 over positive 3. Now that fraction doesn't divide or simplify, but the fact that the signs are different means that I should get a negative answer. The slope here is negative two-thirds. It's worth pointing out that I also know that the answer was going to be negative two-thirds because the line decreases from left to right. This is slope guy's left eyebrow. Here, Panthers, I want to look at maybe this point, and let's use this point. I'll start at the leftmost point. I need to go up, don't I? Up one. I need to then go right. 
Let's see, is that five? Yeah. So my slope is positive one over positive five. And that fraction doesn't reduce either. The signs are the same. It's going to be a positive slope. And that makes sense because the line is increasing. I should just get one-fifth. Okay. It's time for you to pause the video now. Try these two items. See if you can find the slope of the line. When you think you've got the answers, hit play and give yourself some feedback. On the example on the left side, I'd like to use the points 0, 3, and how about 1, 1? But if you used two different points, we should get the same answer. I'd like to start at 0, 3. I need to go down 2, and then I need to go right 1. So my slope will be negative 2 over positive 1. And negative 2 divided by positive 1 is just negative 2. For the example on the right side, let's see, I'll use 2, 1, and maybe 4, 6. So starting at the point on the left, I will go up. How far? Is that 5? Yeah, 5. And then I'll go right 2. So my slope is rise over run. It's positive 5 over positive 2. 5 halves does not reduce or divide out. It's just slope equals 5 halves. How'd you do? Okay. Our last two examples are kind of the oddball examples. This line here is a horizontal line. All it does is move left to right without having any rise whatsoever. There's no rise. There's zero rise. It's all run. Uh, this is Mr. Slope Guy's mouth. A horizontal line, you just kind of need to recognize and know that by definition the slope is zero. I can show you that if I pick any two points, there will be no rise. It will simply be run between the two points. It will be zero divided by whatever I pick, which is zero. This example is a vertical line. This is a straight up and down line. There is no run. It is all rise. This is a vertical line. This is Mr. Slope Guy's nose, the bridge of his nose. And what I need to know here is that the slope is undefined. There's no value for some number divided by zero. So the slope is just simply not defined. It's your turn to try this now. Thanks for watching.